Daquan Hardy. Uh, he's a guy who was a late addition to your recruiting class. Seems like he's going to play a significant role. Can you talk about his development from that point to this point? Yeah, I, I tried to make a big deal out of that the other day after practice because a lot of guys don't even understand. And for maybe the new media that are covering us that haven't been with us in the past, uh, his state championship game, which we were at, that really pushed us over the limit to, to offer him a scholarship, was one of the most impressive individual games I've ever seen, and specifically in that type of game, the state championship game. I think he had five touchdowns in the game uh, in all different ways, a reception, like a kickoff return, an interception return. Uh, just dominant in the game. So, you know, early on, uh, you know, I think one of his issues is a little bit undersized, and he's gotten bigger and stronger and more confident. I think he's going to have a significant role for us, uh, and I'm really proud of him. He's just, he's just doing really well in a lot of different areas, and uh, I do I agree with you. I think he's going to have a big role for us this year. Danny O'Brien, what does he bring to the table? How did you get to know him, and how familiar are you with his story that he almost came here? Oh, very, very familiar. Um, you know, I recruited Danny um, out of high school. Um, then he was the ACC uh, Rookie of the Year. And, um, you know, obviously I left. There ended up being a coaching change. And um, Danny ended up almost obviously transferring to uh, Penn State, ended up going to Wisconsin. Um, and then played in the CFL for a number of years. Uh, we've stayed in touch. Um, he stayed in touch with my family, my wife. Uh, I knew once he got done playing in the CFL, he would want to get into coaching. Um, was, uh, was obviously you know, living in Canada and trying to get over here. You know, it was challenging, but once, once he decided this is what he wanted to do, uh, we were able to move in that direction and offer him an opportunity. And now he's living over my garage where, where I used to live uh, until his fiance um, was able to get across the border. So uh, I've known Danny for a long time. I think he's got a really bright future uh, as a quarterback's coach, uh, eventual offensive coordinator. And it was just kind of waiting for it to time up uh, to get him kind of involved. He, he had been coaching. Uh, he had a, he had a, I think a running back, full-time running back position, uh, coaching in Canada. Uh, but he knew he wanted to get back to the States and this opportunity opened up. James, I think Akeem Beeman obviously is listed at like 256. Um, do you guys still envision him solely being inside or do you want to move him around? Or? Yeah, he was 290 pounds at one point, 289 pounds. Um, that's, that's another conversation for, for another time. Can you tell us what the situation is at that safety spot uh, opposite Brisker? It looks like they have a lot of options there. How many guys do you play? How many guys yeah, Tig, Tig will be the other starter. Um, um, Jair Brown will be the other starter. We call him Tig. Um, but, but there'll be other guys that will, will rotate in at both safety spots, but right now it'll be Brisker and Tig at the two safety spots for us. Uh, didn't you just kind of answer your, your, your question? Uh, yeah, so, you know, obviously, you know, I'm a big believer in the crowd noise, so we do music on one side and do the crowd noise on the opposite uh, to try to prepare for that, try to make it louder than it will be on game day. Uh, we expect it to be a you know a really good environment. Everybody's been waiting for college football for a long time. We do. I think you guys see the shot clocks, so we always have the play clock going as well to try to get used to that. 25 second clocks when appropriate. 40 second clocks when appropriate. Um, to try to make it try to make it more challenging in practice than it, than it would be in a game. Uh, and noise is a big component of that. James, on the defensive side of the ball, you had a couple guys last year that were playing in positions to kind of help the team out. Do you feel like your defense in general fits better this year or, or not? Who, who are you talking about? Oh, Brandon Smith and if you get Musker going more to the 2 by role and some of those guys. 
Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily would describe it the, the way you, you are, but I think you always have a little bit of that. Um, I think Jesse Laquette is a really good example of that right now, but I also believe not only is it in our defense's best interest, I think it's in Jesse's best interest. Um, so him being able to be a starter at the end, as well as a starter at linebackers, how we look at him. Um, and, and I think you'll see a rotation similar to that all, all year long. Uh, but I think he's an, he's an example. Um, but besides that, uh, not a whole lot of that. Um, I think your, your, your argument, I guess, uh, with some guys you could make, a lot of it depends on development. A lot of it uh, depends on uh, experience. You know, I think P.J. Mustafer is probably more suited and probably more of a build of a nose guard. But you could also make the argument he may be our best defensive into your defensive lineman. So you want to put that guy in a position to make plays. Um, so uh, I don't know if I would necessarily describe it exactly, but I, but I understand your point. James. Am I loud enough? Yeah. Uh, when Rasheed got here, Rasheed Walker in 2018, did you foresee him as a future team captain? And what kind of a progression has he made during his time on campus? Yeah, I think you know that's what's great about college athletics. You know, we recruited uh, Rasheed and, and thought very highly of him um, and his entire family, and thought he had a bright future. Um, early on with all of these guys, I think it's hard to say as freshmen who they're going to be four years later. That's, that's hard to predict. Um, they grow, they evolve, they face adversity and challenges, some better than others, um, they, and they face handling success. I think a lot of times for these young guys, and really for all of us, success sometimes is harder to, to manage than the adversity. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him. I know Coach Galt has said this publicly um, in front of our team, and I know we've talked about it. You know, from last year to this year, uh, his improvement uh, physically and mentally, uh, and as a leader, is probably as dramatic as, as any guy uh, I've been a part of, and I know Coach Galt felt the same way. Um, and he was really good last year, but I just think all the other boxes he's checking right now. I think him vote, being voted as a captain from our organization, it was pretty much a landslide. And I think that's telling. I think the other thing that's probably a little bit different is we vote for captains different than I think most places. Uh, most places, it's the players that vote uh, for the captains. To me, that can become a popularity contest. I've never believed that. A lot of times the players will vote for their friends the most popular player or they'll vote for the best player and that's not always the best leader so our entire staff as well as the players vote our academic staff votes our strength staff votes our strength staff probably carry the most weight because they're with them year round and see how they work uh, and how they lead when the coaches aren't around uh, so we factor all that in and and he earned it what kind of preseason did Devin Ford have have you guys seen him take that next step that you look yeah, really good. You know, Devin, Devin is a, a young man in our program. Again, another highly recruited guy that, that came in here and, uh, and, and had to learn to navigate Penn State and, and major college football. Um, I've seen him take tremendous strides. I, I still think there's a lot left in the tank for him. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of him, but I still think there's a lot left, both physically and, and mentally and from a leadership standpoint. Um, so that's exciting. Um, we need him to have a big year, both at the running back position as well as at, as a returner for us. Uh, you'll see him as a as a kickoff returner for us. Um, but yeah, he's had a he's had a really good all season. season. He's always been a hard worker, um, and we'd like to see that you know really translate this year for him. You mentioned yesterday that uh, Anthony Wigan and Eric Wilson are going to split time at left guard. Is there anyone we should expect to have you know more of an edge in terms of playing time on Saturday? No, they're going to split reps. 50-50? If I sit here and tell you 50-50, and then it ends up 60-40 after the game, then I'm not being truthful. You'll say I'm not being truthful. So it, it's a split right now. Obviously, if one player is playing better during the game than the other, then he'll play more. Um, we're going in with it with the mentality they're going to split the reps. Um, but But – very rarely does it necessarily play out that way. Penn State for Jared Tangelo, what kind of uh, impact has he made and, and how much of a uh, 
fortunate fit is that for you guys, given some of the, the issues with that particular place? Yeah, really good. You know, um, one of the things I think we've done a good job of is not only getting guys in here that we feel like can play and have a significant impact, um, but also I think are, are good cultural fits. Now, this is where he wanted to come out of high school. Um, no, no disrespect to anybody, but this is where he wanted to come as kind of his dream school. Uh, so when the opportunity was presented for him and for us, um, you, you know, at the time you didn't really know how it was going to play out. Is he going to come in and be a starter for us? He's going to come in and be a depth guy. You're not really sure, uh, but he's done a really good job. You know, um, it's always interesting to me in talking to these young men uh, to compare and contrast. A lot of our guys think they know, uh, but they've never really been anywhere else. Uh, so with my staff, I think that's important. Um, the perspective that they bring, you know, we hire an Anthony Poindexter and bringing him in with a fresh set of eyes. Um, and then the same thing for the players. So um, it's always interesting to talk to Johnny Dixon about the differences between here and South Carolina, or you know, obviously uh, we call him Congo, um, to talk to Congo about, you know, the differences between here and Duke or so on and so forth. It's good information for me. You, you learn, um, you know, things that they did well that maybe we can apply here as well. Thank you, coach. Thanks.